Hi everyone, welcome. In this video, let's talk about the two-space jump in response to the corner approach. In the previous video, we talked about the large knight's response to the approach. So what's the difference? There are a lot of similarities. There are minor differences that need to be pointed out. So the idea, of course, is for white to move faster to the left side and even the center, right? because this is on the fourth line. We'd say stones on the third line, care more about territory. But if you play here on the fourth line, it's really about the influence toward the center. So it's a pretty fast move. And again, if black chooses some of these basic Joseph keys, then white will have an advantage, right? Because number six simply moves faster without sacrificing the safety of this shape. Similarly, if black plays something like this, again, number six is at a better position than at c14 or d14. It simply moves faster, so white will gain by playing here. The disadvantage to number six, of course, again, is the corner. It basically leaves the corner open, and black can come in and take the corner territory very easily. As amateur players, of course, we can choose how we want to play more flexibly. If you want to play a game where you focus on the side territory and influence toward the center, of course, you can give up the corner. But according to AI and most professional players, this is not a sustainable way for you to play because this kind of gives up the corner too easily and you cannot very easily make up for the loss because the competition is at a very high level. So let's talk about what happens after black takes the corner. So similar to the previous video where we talked about the, the large knight's response, white cannot block from this side. This doesn't work because one way to evaluate this type of pattern is to see which position your move is at and to see whether this move fits well with this pattern. And here the answer is no, because it's only a two-space extension. And normally, this stone, this triangle, needs to be at least, at least three spaces apart, maybe four or even five. Right, so it's a very strong wall, and the triangle here is it's only two spaces, it's considered redundant. So that's why this is not viable for white. The white must block this way, right? Cutting off number five and seven. Black can crawl here, right? Because number six is so far apart. Again, if you play something like this, just another joseki locally, number six once again is at a pretty good spot. So that's why black needs to crawl here. And again, white has a few choices. The first one is this extension. This is probably the most recommended in this situation. Black will have to play this honey and connect, which we've already seen quite a few times here in this chapter so far, if you're following the order. Uh, it's a key move for gaining the territory as well as eye space. And because number five is threatening this cut, white will have to address this cut. Of course, AI might suggest that White takes sente at this time because the board is still empty. That, ma that makes sense. But still, just know that cutting here is extremely valuable because now black has access to the entire upper side and can build on it. And these two stones are pretty strong, 5 and 15. The reason why white can take sente in this situation is because white is not super concerned about these other four stones. They are out. They have access to the left side and they're not going to be enclosed or attacked anytime soon. So that's why white can take sente, but just know that this is actually really important. So what if white wants to save number 12? Connecting here, as we learned in the age of AI, it's a little too slow. So this is not gonna be great for white, right? Look at number six, it's not a, at the best position, right? That's why black benefits from this variation. A harder move is right here. Right. If black ignores it, now white will have number 16. Again, this is a much better shape for white, as I explained before. More efficient, and white is basically alive right after 14 and 16. So this is better for white. But of course, after number 15, you're worried about this push. You can play this exchange first, and then get to this point. So as we've already seen in a couple other Joseki videos, it's best for black to extend once, right? Still threatening this cut. And if white connects here, again, white is in an ugly shape and it's very slow. So that's why AI is suggesting this move, right? Now 17 and 18 are mi. In this situation, 
it's not recommended for black to play either. And black will probably just play here. And after number 18, right, because there's a cut, if you ignore it, there's a push and cut. This is not okay for black, right? This is not okay for black. So black will have to make a move here. And now it seems like this move is big, but according to AI, jumping here is bigger, basically killing 5 and 15, or at least make these two black stones not worth saving, right? If you want to jump out, then it's going to be a very tough fight for black. So it's better off for black to, you know, just give up these two stones and play on the outside sometime down the line. It's a better idea for black to proceed. So number 20 here finishes this Joseki. And it slightly favors black because number six has given up the corner. But after number six, starting from number seven, this is pretty even. Of course, if you're white and if you want to preserve the left side, you have this move, right? This double Hane. Black can take Sente now, or black can connect here in exchange for white's connection on the outside. So this is another way to settle the shape. Another interesting move I saw AI suggest is right here, right? So the idea is very similar to this one. It's just that black, of course, will play here. If you cut here, then number 16 is at a much better spot than J17, right? Because it really tightens Black's liberties here. So Black will probably play here, play something like this. And now White can still keep up the pressure. Right? I don't know exactly the advantage to this. Maybe professionals can explain this more easily than I do. But just another idea for you. Kind of an interesting move. Kind of bumping against these two Black stones. So that's number 10 right here. Very similar to some of the patterns we've already seen earlier in this chapter. What about this move? This is where the Joseki differs from when number six is on the third line, right? Because on the third line, black cannot play this honey. White can cut immediately. So that's the correct move, right? We had black giving up the corner and taking a nice wall, very efficient wall on the outside in the previous video. But here, white cannot cut. If you cut, you're just going to get killed. And the sacrifice is basically in vain, right? You're not gaining anything as white. And black's number 11, this honey, is the wrong move, actually, even though white cannot cut. Let's talk about this wrong move first. Right? You might want to proceed this way, right? because you're thinking honey is pretty strong, white cannot cut. So what's wrong with this move is that black's liberty is actually quite tight, right? especially number 11, 13. So white will just play this honey, and now... Black can only play this, right? Number 17 is the shape here. And after this, um, white is actually in a pretty good position. Has a nice wall on the outside. And what should black do? Black should take care of number five somehow. And white will just connect here. Black owes a move here. And this is one way for both sides to proceed. But what AI seems to be saying here is that white has a really nice wall on the outside. Black's shape on the corner is not necessarily efficient, right? So the differences are subtle. Uh, if you like this variation as black, uh, go for it, right? Until you start playing games where you feel that this pattern puts you behind, right? It becomes your liability. Then you give up this pattern and try something else. So I says this slightly favors white uh, because of this variation, mostly 12, 14, and 16. has a nice shape for white on the outside. Another thing, briefly to mention, especially for amateurs, is that you might want to cut here, right? It seems like you might be able to kill these three white stones, and as white, you cannot give them up that easily. So what should you do? Right, so you hurry, you, you keep the liberties tight by playing at number 24. It seems like if black hurries, black can kill white. But the thing here to note for beginners is that you have to Play this Atari instead. Two Atari moves, 26, 28, and come out. So after number 30, white already has nice eye space, it's mostly alive, and black is actually in a pretty heavy shape. Black will have to move out and start this fight. So this is going to be an easier fight for white. And that's why number 21 cannot cut here, right? You have to play on the outside, kind of threatening this cut, but you can't cut right away as black. So number 11 here is not great for 
black, at least according to AI. So what's the right move? Right move is right here. And it's very important to know how to settle the shape. So white basically has a couple choices. One is to play from above. And black can just play this, right? Now it's threatening this cut. Now white doesn't have this honey because of, this is a double Atari, right? So the shape is different. So white will probably have to connect. And black can just jump out um, for this. And white will have to play a pincer on the upper side to limit number five. So this is slightly better for black, also viable for both sides. So this is white covering from the fourth line. Well, there's white blocks here. How should black settle the shape? Right, It's not that easy for beginners. So this is something you should learn, what the shape is. You have to push out first. White will have to play the honey to keep black inside. Otherwise, black will come out and connect with number five. Right, So this is not going to be a good fight for white. So white will have to play the honey here, and black just plays this move. White will have to play on the outside here, which I'll explain in a second why white cannot play this. Um, and now black connects, right? So these four stones, very strong, it's in a nice shape. Now white will play on the outside. Black owes a move on the corner, and we have to stay alive. Now AI seems to be suggesting this move, right? You might be thinking of pincer, but black can cut here and start a very complicated fight. Black doesn't really have this cut because this way black will just die. But there are many ways for black to trigger the fight. So now AI is actually suggesting this move. It's very solid, but it's slower. Right? So this is going to favor black if black gets to play on, on the upper side here. Black takes the corner, takes care of number five as well. White only has a pretty strong wall on the outside. And that's why this favors black. So that's 13, 15, and 17. This is the shape you need to learn from this Joseki. This is how you settle this jumping move at number 11. And that's number 10, right? So it's really threatening to come into the corner, but by playing this move and selling the shape here, black will be able to handle the pressure of this move. This will be similar, right? This is basically playing one more move, playing the exchange at number 10 and 11, and black still has this move. And it's going to be similar to the patterns we just saw. One move that's not okay for white to play is right here. This move will actually make number six very redundant and inefficient. So what should black do? Again, just honey and connect. If you've seen enough of these videos, you just have to learn this move, right? Because again, it's very good for territory and eye space. That's why both sides play on the second line here. It's for eye space. And it actually puts pressure on white. So especially after number 10 is here, well, it doesn't really have this move because there are two cutting points here. And that's going to be a problem for white if white keeps playing on the second line. So white will have to connect here. And now black can just play the honey on the second line. What should white do? White will probably have to play a move here. And now look at number six, right? This is when you know that this is not a good shape for white because normally, if you play this joseki, you don't need this stone. This triangle is simply too redundant and very, very inefficient. And this reason alone is enough to say this is not a good joseki for white because this triangle is one of white's main moves. And it basically means that white has wasted a move, right? Because it's so inefficient. So that's why this is not okay for white. White's wall is still pretty weak. Black still has this clamping move, really annoying, right? Number five is far from dead, and this is not going to be viable for white. So that's why I see a lot of these moves in the amateur play. Seems intuitive for white, but this is the wrong move. So in this situation, if you're white, remember either this move, extension, or right here on the second line. These two are the best moves for white. But overall, because number six and I give up the corner, black will have a slight advantage if both sides choose the correct Jose keys. Once again, similarly to the large knight's response, black can just ignore it for now because number six is not really putting a lot of pressure on number five either, right? So black can leave it for now. And when white plays the pincer, black still has the option of taking the corner. So black is 
in a pretty flexible position and doesn't need to respond if you do not like giving white a potential wall on the outside early on in the game. You've still got options, but this video hopefully explains the main variations stemming from the 3-3 invasion after number 6. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Good luck, and thank you for watching.